afternoon all I'm with my good friend Chris chess explained game three has just finished hi Chris yeah Trevon hi yeah we're pretty uh, you've got this game uh, hot, uh, hot off the press so to say it's uh, been finished uh, I don't know close to an hour ago or something so we are really quick here in doing a video yeah and um, yeah it's the second <clears throat> white game by Anand and he didn't get anything in game one so it was interesting to see uh, how he tackles um, yeah, Gelfand now with white and also interesting to see if Gelfand uh, sticks to the Grunfeld and yeah he did in a way but uh, let's uh, put some moves on the board. I, th I think uh, I get the idea Anand's been looking at our previous video because I don't think many people mentioned the idea that you mentioned <laughs> F3 was played here. Yeah, this would be a quite quite good advertisement for our channels, right? <laughs> would state in an in an interview that he's watched this video, and uh, I, I doubt that really. <laughs> yeah, but okay, it's a, it's an interesting sideline. I, I was still surprised that um, that he played it because, well, the World Championship matches is usually a place for for the main lines, and uh, you don't see sort of sidelines so often but it's um, it's pretty pretty established by now it's not not a risky or, or fishy move or something hmm. okay um well Gaffand went to d5 which is pretty much in Grunfeld style for the black players uh, what I could recommend if you want to play um, a creative kind of game you can go on move three here knight c6 which is quite interesting ah knight c6 yeah, yeah, this this has been recommended recently in various uh, books on the Grunfeld, mostly because d5, it's not like black has huge problems after d5, but knight c6 um, is a pretty recent idea, and it's it's interesting. Yeah, knight e5, and you got uh, a pretty hypermodern <laughs> kind of opening, mm. where black has moved uh, his knights a lot, mm. but uh, he will attack the center with c6 and probably e6 also. And um, yeah, it's uh, quite interesting. Um, White usually, I'm not sure, I think he plays knight c3, not d5, but I'm not an expert. I only know that this uh, this variation um, was, was played quite a bit recently also by Swidler, um, who's kind of a Grunfeld number one player. Okay, but uh, d5 certainly uh, on move three is the, the, the typical Grunfeld-like move. And um, I think the next couple of moves are pretty pretty standard. So white captures and goes e4. And now we see the point of f3. There's no knight to capture. Mm. So black needs to go knight b6. Yeah, this looks um, more fun for me uh, as white. That uh, without that capture, this knight can be staying there on c3 now after knight c3. Uh. Yeah, one one idea also is um, that white quite often even uh, goes for long castle and uh, yeah we see this um, later in the game. So bishop g7 which... Um, this is a little bit like an Alakine defense um, with the knight. Yeah. Yeah, um, a little bit. <laughs> uh, of course black has got rid of his d pawn so he's got frontal pressure on d4. Uh, yeah, it's still it's still very um, Grunfeld like this uh, this position, mm. but um, it's it's just um, slightly different and it offers some maybe some more possibilities to to create new ideas um, than in the main lines where we often have those twenty twenty five move deep uh, theoretical lines. So mm. it's maybe a little bit more of an approach to to play some chess instead to um, yeah, learn variations by heart. So I think it's welcome that they play a little bit um, not offbeat, but uh, not not the absolute super theoretical main lines. Mm. Okay, so bishop b3. Okay, white needs to cover d4. Now castles. And at this point, I think um, white um, has some choice. Can uh, queen d2 is uh, the main move? Yep. Um, I'm I'm not sure. I'm just thinking about this. Uh, this is a different line that I'm thinking of. I'm sorry. So no, queen d2 is, uh, is the main line. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Supporting d4, maybe rook d1 is useful. Maybe bishop h6 is going to be useful. 
to get rid of the bishop at some point. Yeah, I was I was just a bit confused because there's a quite similar looking line, um, but uh, okay, I don't want to get it <laughs> too much theoretical um, things here. Now, now black can can play uh, lots of moves. I think e5 is not not the most common one. Oh, I think I, I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. I think knight c6 might be um, the main line. Oh. But uh, e5 is certainly a logical move. It's not uh, a huge uh, surprise or something. So this d pawn, yeah, is is it going to be controversial? Is it going to be blockaded? Is it going to be exchanged for weak? Yeah, this yeah. is this is the main the main point here. This d pawn, which will get a pass pawn quickly. Black plays c6 mm. to get some room for his pieces. Uh, I think. Um, it's often a very difficult uh, decision if you should play a move like c6 and actually give um, give the opponent this this pass pawn, which you will get after c takes d5, e takes d5. Yeah. But if you don't play this, you need to consider that in the long run, maybe c7 will get a target on the c file. That's a good point. You're removing a target on the c file. That's c7. Yeah. Yeah, and um, and you also gain a little bit um, more room for your pieces and this kind of position but you also need to consider if you play c takes d5 e takes d5 this pawn is on d5 is a passed pawn but it's also an unprotected pawn mm. it's not protected by some other pawn it's not a pawn chain anymore so mm. you actually have some chances to maybe get some pressure on this pawn um, which is not the case if you get the safely protected d5 Bridge head there, so yeah. I think it's um, it's very often a good idea to to attack um, such an advanced pawn and not to be uh, too afraid of the d pawn. If you're afraid of a passed d pawn, then you cannot play the Grunfeld anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, White plays a very aggressive move now, h4. So this is the sort of stuff um, <laughs> I'll definitely play in. In, in war zones in blitz <laughs> it's, it's, it looks logical like <laughs> um, yeah. yeah just to try and sort of uh, get an attack going maybe if black's not careful yeah I think but it, I think it also has some um, has some other point uh, here uh, I think um, of course white dreams about uh, yeah giving mate on the h file <laughs> but uh, there's some other things uh, one thing is the knight is on b6 so you actually can easily play h5, so it's not yeah. like you play h4 and yeah. uh, black has no problems preventing it. He mm. certainly does not want to go h5, which looks a bit weird. Mm. But uh, it has another point. If you consider white's uh, position here with the pawn on f3, yeah. this um, makes it quite difficult for you to develop your pieces, which is also the, the, main, um, the main problem with this kind of setup. How would you try, how would you try to develop your king side here? This is uh, difficult. You cannot go knight e2 at any point because of knight c4. Oh, blimey! Yeah, you're right. There's a yeah, nasty fall. You, you cannot move. Yeah, you cannot move the knight there. You couldn't before you play h4. You couldn't play knight h3 because black oh. would capture and yeah. destroy your pawn um, yeah. pawn formation. If the pawn was there. Yeah. So okay, next idea. You need to develop your bishop first. Yeah. Where to? Bishop d3. This leaves d5 hanging. Ooh, you need yeah. to protect the pawn. So you've got sort of a traffic jam on the king side, and h4 yeah. actually allows the rook to play some role in the game. Yeah. So you don't necessarily need to develop your f1, f1 bishop because usually you move your bishop out also to get your rook into play. So h4 guarantees that your rook has got something to do. Yeah. And you will see this in the game that white uh, never moves the f1 bishop. <laughs> Yeah, only at move 20 something. Uh, so, this is uh, also an idea h5 to get your rook um, into play, get it to some, give it something to do. Yeah. Um, if you consider that you, you're not able to develop freely on the king side. So, okay, um, so black uh, captured on d5 now. No. Okay, white uh, recaptures, of course. Um, and now knight to d7. Yeah, he wants to get the knight to f6, which seems um, pretty logical to cover the king a bit yes. considering that white will play h5 and he does so immediately uh, so yeah after h5 knight f6 and attacking of course d5 now again uh, so there's free on d5 now uh, yeah so white takes time though to peel open that h file a little bit 
and yeah, um, it takes on uh, oh, like recaptures with the f pawn. Yeah, of course you don't want to have the open h file, so you need to recapture with the f pawn. Uh, what would be, um, yeah, after h g? Actually, this is difficult, isn't it, to defend bishop h six? Then yeah, that would be quite dangerous. Yeah, it looks it looks um, difficult. Mm. Black needs to do some, I think, very weird move like knight h5 to avoid immediate mate. <laughs> yeah. And knight h5, it doesn't inspire too much. <laughs> no. So fg, um, okay, capturing away from the center, but means that um, that you know maybe uh, if needed, well, this this can be defended uh, laterally uh, if needed. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. It's, it's just. Mm. Yeah, those those kind of capturing towards the center stuff is, is nice, but it doesn't help if you get mated. <laughs> and this diagonal is not such a pain at the moment if the knight's covering c4. So this yeah. otherwise yeah. it would be quite dangerous. So it's more justified in this position. And, and yeah, it would it would of course um, be uh, quite quite horrible if uh, White would get a bishop to b3 or something. But yeah, it's uh, yeah this bishop is uh, is a problem piece. So White supports the d-pawn now. Castles, queenside, and supports the d-pawn. Um, and uh, but it, of course the c file now uh, with the king there. Um, may or maybe the bishop might be thinking bishop f5, but there's always g4, I suppose, which might be useful. So the bishop yeah. actually goes to d7. Yeah, bishop f5 looks it looks like an active move, but I think g4 would have been mm. a problem. Also, if you think uh, g4. Then it may be knight h3 to g5 would be an idea. Maybe put this on the board. So um, bishop b7 and then maybe knight h3 to go go to g5. Yeah. Lead to e6. Um, yeah. Just one one offhand idea. I'm not 100% uh, sure if this is good, but uh, it, it it doesn't look like something you you want to see really. No. 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 I think bishop d7 looks looks normal. And what 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 I what I've Actually, uh, what what amazed me here, we are on move uh, 14, and uh, both players spent about uh, 10 minutes here. <laughs> and uh, from White, from 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 Vichy's point of view, it's uh, it's not such a surprise because uh, well, he prepared f3, and this is one one of the lines. Maybe I'm I'm, I'm not um, I didn't look up uh, if this has been played already, but it it developed pretty logical, um, and um, it's it may be possible that. You get this uh, in your preparation if you go through the lines, but I was pretty surprised that uh, Gerfund also just blitzed out this stuff because f3 is not the first kind of line you you would look at if you prepare the Grunfeld because you've got so much other stuff to cover. So he seems really exceptionally well prepared, or yeah. or he was maybe bluffing a bit. <laughs> it's also <laughs> possible, but um, he's not the kind of guy I think who's just into bluffing. And maybe he really knew this stuff. Okay, so King B one. Yeah, here I I guess there's no time uh, for trying something like Bishop takes B six with the idea of uh, Bishop C four. I suppose that's harmless, isn't it? Um, because you won't yeah. have anything to blast through the H file. Um, yeah, well, well, one thing is, if you if you play a move like bishop takes b6, you better be sure that you win immediately. Otherwise, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. You, um, you just given the bishop pair and you weakened your dark squares so terribly. But this this d6 here is is not a big deal, I suppose. The king would just go to h8, and then and then there's nothing. Yeah, it's hard to make the king with black's bishop on g7 being existent and white's not. So. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's it's something you need to consider, of course. If it if it's winning, it's a good move. But otherwise, bishop takes b6. Yeah, it's, it's um, more than risky. It's very also. very committal forcing move. Yeah. So instead, king king b1. Yeah, it seems much more sensible. Just keep the pressure on. Uh, get the king into a little bit of safety. Um, yeah. In case uh, black plays rook c8, you you need to do this anyway because d5 would hang. Mm. So um, it's a prophylactic move, and also king a1. Getting this uh, the king into safety and also, what what kind of what, what other moves should White play? It's uh, <laughs> a bit difficult. You you cannot uh, develop your pieces on the king side. And <laughs> it's just the same as I said a couple of minutes ago. You cannot move your bishop. You you could play knight h3, but hmm. yeah, this in this position, um, 
Black, I guess Black doesn't want to play this. Uh, there's he he played a different move here, but Knight C4. I guess you you do just take that here. Yeah, this this sort of um, solves White's development issue, right? Yeah, and now you've got I don't know. Um, what do you think of this position? Maybe just Bishop H6. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not cool. sure oh. if you should try something. Yeah, Bishop H6 is. Um, a bit controversial, also. You would, yeah, rook D4? You, of course, you'd like to. Yeah, maybe it's a, it's even a tactical problem. Yeah, this is even 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 better. Maybe just knight G2. Yeah, right, and then take your time over. But yeah, covers D4, and then then yeah. That's White's development is fine. It's not sort of um, inhibited, is it? It is sort of. Um, they're in each other's way at the moment. The pieces, aren't they? Um, yeah, I would try try something like if if, if Black allows me to. Get the knight to g3 and play play a knight to e4 in this position, but knight c4 mm -hmm. looks a bit um, yeah. against the spirit of the position. Instead, black you, um, this lib aims to liberate the bishop, and there's a target on c3 is exposed. Yeah, this is of course a, a very dynamic choice, but it's very much um, in the spirit of this position, I guess, mm -hmm. to uh, to open it up. And uh, what what should white play here? Let's say let's say White would play uh, F D X E four, and uh, now you can consider rook takes. Yeah, rook takes is interesting. Ooh. B takes C three knight E four would I think um, be immediate disaster. Yeah, absolute. It looks absolutely terrible <laughs> for this bishop going to C three. That looks yeah. absolute disaster. But Queen takes C three. Um, I'm not. I'm not so sure about this here. Mm. Is there something? Ah, yeah, it's um, it's tricky. Well, like Queen B3, Bishop A4. So quite. Yeah. Thing. And there, are, there are some tricks. Black is very active. But um, I'm not sure if it's uh, if it's so great. Queen D3, say, Queen yeah, F6 hits B2 and also threatens Queen takes. Sometimes not 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 at the moment, but but Queen F6 would be an, maybe an interesting. Move. Um, yeah, yeah, you're you're right. This is this is very dangerous. What what is White doing now? Let's say Bishop D4. You can you can uh, capture on on D4 because F1 oh, is hanging. Golden, yeah, Golden Bennett. I was about to say. Yeah, F1 is hanging. Yes, ouch. Yeah. So this is the kind of tactical dangers lurking for White. It did seem White's back rank was was very weak throughout this game. Actually, yeah, for a large yeah, part of this game. It was so like I'm, I'm not quite sure about rook c3 really. If this is uh, mm. if maybe maybe there's there's uh, something else. Uh, just if you if everything else fails on f takes e4, you could also play like knight a4, which which, which wouldn't wouldn't be bad. But um, rook c3 is very dangerous though. Uh, but you can also um, you could play this. It's not uh, not bad at all. I think. Yeah, actually, this is one of the themes I want to discuss with you in another video, so in a general video, because you know sometimes you've got a choice of aiming for a minimal advantage with greater safety or going for the absolute maximum, you know. And so mm. you know this is like a more safer move. Rook c3 is more committal, but might promise more. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe knight e2 here, but I was thinking about stuff like this, like let's say knight. Yeah, now now knight e4 maybe. Whoa, b2, yeah. Yeah, stuff like this. It's it's uh, of course pure tactics. Yeah, so we would need more time to really assess this. But um, it's looking very dangerous. <laughs> mm. Bishop f5 maybe setting up a pin. Yeah. G3 bishop uh, knight f. Oh wow, very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, there's there's very much uh, there's really a multitude of uh, of good. Uh, Good possibilities. Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the game um, after e4, Anand was wanting just to neutralize this bishop. It seems yeah. with bishop you, d4. If you look at uh, lines like this, it's very understandable that you want to <laughs> <laughs> control this. This is like a dragon bishop, actually. It's like a Sicilian dragon bishop almost. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah. it's, it's dangerous. It's pointing it's at White's it's king it's uh, across the diagonal here. So um, yeah. yeah, why not neutralize it? So, uh, but uh, the pressure's 
pro increased on c3 here with knight a4 and um, what do you think of this move knight a4 it looks quite logical um, yeah wants to get rid of uh, one of white's few developed pieces it's um well, white is uh, not very well developed, and usually it's a good idea to exchange the few pieces that he has developed. Mm. So, and b6 was wasn't such a great uh, position for the knight, and also it allows the queen to move out, and we see it uh, immediately knight g2. Oh yes, queen a5 is facilitated now with knight a4 as well. So after yeah. knight g2, queen a5 is actually used. It's it's appeared and it's used straight away. This new option. Yeah. No, but this but this um. Seems to involve, um, yeah, this pawn sacrifice that we get here because White just played knight takes e4. Yes, hitting the queen and preparing this Wiesenzug uh, check. So I don't know how to pronounce Wiesenzug properly. Perhaps you, you know how to pronounce it. How do you pronounce Wiesenzug? Zwischenzug. Of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, uh, so. <laughs> So we have one of those here after Queen takes d2. I, th I don't know what, what else Black can play here. Um, that was yeah, I think this is uh, pretty much only moves. You cannot retreat the Queen. This wouldn't make any sense. But uh, as we can see in the, in the game, Black um, retains some uh, active pieces. So it wasn't a blunder or something. He, he just thought it um, would be, I think, the best option to keep his um, pieces active. So Knight takes f6 now. Rook takes. Rook takes f6, yes, because that that speeds up the rook being able to either like harass the pawn. Well, the main thing, I think, to put pressure on the pawn. I don't think there's any other attacking possibilities. Um, yeah, he went to f5. It's, oh, uh, sorry, there is also rook f5. <laughs> Pardon me, rook f5 as well as to attack the pawn as rook d6. So in this in this position, rook f5. Yeah, this was played, and now, yeah, what else should White uh, do? Okay, he exchanged on g7. So he speeded up the pressure on d5 there. If he had played um, bishop takes f6, this would be clearly a little bit better for White, wouldn't it? Or winning for White after rook takes? Yeah, it's not winning, but um, you sort of lose, lose a move here. Yeah. In the game, he got uh, the same position with the rook on f5, yeah. which... Uh, yeah. It's active immediately. Yeah, so that was quite a neat little trick. Yeah, rook takes f6. So now rook f5, an immediate problems for white to solve. It seems it seems a bit scary, this lack of development and, and the back row weakness threat here. So this knight's kind of defensive. Um, but white can at least get rid of that horrible bishop now. Well, bishop takes g7 without getting mated yeah. immediately. So yeah, he took there and then... Then played uh, d6 immediately advancing. Yeah, the the only trump card that White has. White has an extra pawn and a strong extra pawn. Actually, during it's, during the live stream, I was thinking someone mentioned that I thought it was a cute move, rook h4. But I'm not sure. There's a back row weakness here which can be tactically exploited because uh, rook h4 yeah. promises to be able to defend the pawn. But I think the promise is is smashed because knight b6, rook here. I think. There, there might be some sort of uh, deflection going on. Um, actually, may, may, hang on, I'm not sure. I'm not entirely sure. Um, <clears throat> what do you think about this rook h4? Um, yeah, rook h4. I think this this was also mentioned by uh, Jan Timman, who did the live commentary um, on the official side, mm. and uh, they uh, they analyzed it a bit, and at the end, uh, sort of concluded that it um, wouldn't um, be so great, but I don't remember and I don't see offhand. Mm. Mm -hmm. Of course it looks risky because of the, the back rank. Mm. Yeah, so not... and maybe, maybe, I'm not sure, bishop b5. All right, yeah, bishop b5 looks another dangerous option just to undermine this knight and for e Yeah, th this of course requires uh, very uh, very decent calculation so white cannot really move his knight but it is threatened uh, to take now on e2 and give rook c1 mate yeah so white uh, and a move like b3 doesn't help it's still mate mm. the knight is um, covering b2 yeah b3 would be a total disaster wouldn't it because bishop takes and then f1 is hit as well no time for that because bishop yeah 
<laughs> yeah, it's a funny, funny mate, yeah, with Rook C1. <laughs> so, so uh, maybe this move, but uh, White, of course, um, can play a move like A3 here. It's tricky. I don't really want to turn on an engine. It, it would uh, it would kill my CPU anyway during <laughs> with everything else on. So, but it's an interesting thing, which maybe Anand did have a brief look at. Who knows? Yeah, it, it it's it's a move it's, that um, that looks a bit dangerous for you, yeah, because the back rank mm. is is an issue and um, hard to tell. I would definitely need to to look really deep into this because if if it would be a great move, he would have played it, and I'm certainly not mm. calculating better or quicker than, than mm. Vichy. So <laughs> it's certainly something he considered, I guess, because. Well, the rook is on the h file, and it might be uh, a good idea to to get it activated. But maybe bishop b5 was um, yeah. was too shaky for for white. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's hard to sell, see after the bishop is on b5 how you would develop your your pieces there without um, getting compromised on the back rank. Even yeah. if, if even if if white goes a3 here, for instance, to to give you give yourself some some space here for the king. Then you're still not uh, really uh, threatening to move the the knight, and um, hmm. yeah, and also I just had a quick look at, you know, the deflections are possible. Say rook d1, there's a deflection nav takes, rook d5, deflect trying to deflect the rook from the back row, that'd be a little disaster scenario. Yeah, black has some, all sorts of tactical tricks here to to get the pawn back or. Mm. Um, sort of um, irritate White so much that he cannot uh, really use this uh, this pawn. Yeah. And I think it was um, maybe a very good judgment um, by uh, by Gelfand to to get into this position. If it's really the case that White um, cannot do much, mm. I think in the press conference they agreed that somehow it uh, it seemed that White should have one or another idea. But they really couldn't <clears throat> couldn't tell at which position or at, at which point White could have played better. So uh, it, it was certainly not something uh, completely obvious. All right. So d6 um, and um, rook to c5. Yeah. Okay. Logic. Again. Yeah. Threatening to back row mate White. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Restricting even the in options. A, in the world, in the, even in the World Championship match, you're allowed to. <laughs> To post some pretty <laughs> simple threats. <laughs> yeah. So rook d1 seems to simply defend against. Well, it's important to defend against that. <laughs> um, and now uh, a5, a5. Interesting. Yeah, this was a bit, um, bit of a curious move. It's hard to tell um, what kind of. Um, Idea there is, but uh, you, you you see in the game. I think what 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 an idea could be, but uh, at first I think uh, the commentators also didn't really get the get this move. Mm. All right, so now he went rook h4 anyway. Ah, in yeah. this position, yeah. It's, yeah, but it's it's very really hard to say how else White should um, get his pieces into play. So yeah. <laughs> So that did turn out to be the point of h4. It's about the rook getting the rook into the game. So, but this infiltration to the seventh is is uncomfortable now. Rook c2. Yeah, Black certainly has got some some good uh, good play here. Mm. And now b3. They don't think uh, White should have so much else. And now very very interesting um, knight to b2, which is very very concrete very concrete way to try to justify the pawn deficit so white i think must go to b1 yeah if he goes to um e1 i guess it's a disaster scenario um yeah it's it's the the, the, the problem is that um black will go knight d3 to b4 anyway or at oh, to b4 to yes hitting a2 yeah this is one idea of of, of, of this a5 move yeah Covering the, ah, the knight, so yes. that uh, so this rook's that, not hitting the knight. Yeah, exactly. So there was some really deep point here, and uh, I'm not quite sure what White should play in this position. Besides uh, resigning, it seems lost. Yeah. <laughs> it looks, it looks, it looks <laughs> difficult because the bishop's maybe, already maybe willing to spring as well if needed to f5. Yeah, maybe you can play knight d4 still, but it looks like. Really, very close to. 
to to disaster here. Yeah. Certainly nothing you you would uh, want to have uh, on the board. Mm. So, all right, I think uh, rook b1 is just the the more yeah. circumspect move here. Yeah. Now, knight to d3, of course, it was hanging. Yeah, and now I've got this knight b4 idea. Yes, it's so knight d4 hitting the rook, and um, the rook should move here, um, and it does move. So rook d2. Yeah, you need to cover your your knight, and uh, okay, white is glad to yeah finally move this bishop <laughs> with a capture, yeah, <laughs> to get rid of that pesky knight. Yeah. Yeah, now you've got this kind of position where white has got a, a nice looking knight on d4, which actually doesn't uh, do anything besides being dominated by the bishop, and which just, yeah constantly uh, needs some protection because it doesn't have any pawn that uh, naturally protects it. So um, you need to be a bit a bit cautious here. Not that that white is worse or something, but black is I think active enough to. Um, to justify his pawn deficit here. Yeah. Yeah, rookie one is uh, quite obvious to, to go to e7. Yep. Activating um, your rook here. Yeah, and now um, I think we are pretty much. But it's not really threatening. It needs to safeguard. Well, after this next move, it shows it's not a threat now. This rook d2 means that rook c1 is, is going to be there if the rook leaves yeah. that first rank. So. And, and, and interestingly, now the king comes to its own defence now with king b1. I don't know what, if there's any other better move than king b1. That seems a logical move. Yeah, it's pretty difficult. What what, <laughs> yeah. what, what, what do you want to want to play here? <laughs> sort of a constructive move for white. It's 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 difficult. You need to protect this uh, this 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 knight on d4 and. Mm, yeah, it's maybe there's not not much else that uh, White could do. Now here, yeah, no. um, hmm? is it possible um, we haven't got the back row issue now? So Black can't do this because he just lose the bishop here, wouldn't he? Uh, there's no yeah, back row. There's do. nothing there. So so now just, um, yeah. the the bishop's actually throws in the check, um, allowing the knight to uh, just take it, and it does. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, sort of, um, yeah, it's, it's just a matter of concrete um, calculation here. But um, this, rook, this rook endgame white needs to take, I guess, to make any sort of uh, progress. It would be uh, uh, stupid to move king a1. So, um, yeah, this position, this is um, the, the open question if there's some some sort of idea here that White could try, but it, it looks very difficult because Rook C to C two is just um, very menacing for, if it's going to happen yeah. for Petro. Yeah. And um, so, I think um, White doesn't doesn't really um, have much here. But here, I I was kind of looking at this on my iPhone earlier. I, I mm -hmm. had to go away, and I thought, hang on, why aren't people mentioning Rook C7? I was thinking, am I am I going mad here? I thought Rook C7 is really good. I didn't really see uh, what Black would do, and no one was mentioning it. And and lo and behold, Anand plays it. And apparently, there were better moves. There's this really tactical move. I think I was I was running on chess games on my mobile, and um, of course, Rook mm -hmm. C7 has a weakness of the last move, doesn't it? That the Rook can now use that E8 square to go back to E8. Yeah. But I, I thought it was a strong move when I saw this position, but but not. But maybe there is something tactical like d7 uh, possible. Um, I think this might be the uh, there's there's an idea of of something yeah, like rook, rook c4 rook. coming up. So um, maybe just rook c2. So yeah, the, you. And now you want to play rook c4, yeah. Ah, I see. Now, is there a perpetual check here? I haven't checked this with with, with an engine actually. I think someone posted some engine analysis in, in, in the thing. Um, or, um, but rook, this might be a winning try. Um, I dare not turn on an engine here. As I say, my CPU is limited <laughs> with this Skype and everything. Um, but this is interesting, isn't it? Uh, rook c4 here. 
Yeah, it's a, it really um, is a matter of um, calculation here. It's also not immediately clear to me if um, black um, cannot take on c4. Right, so say black takes. Maybe it's ridiculous, but and then a move like h5 with the idea king f6 getting uh, sort of winning the d7 pawn. Oh right. Or sort of like so, and or sort of, yeah, just uh, have this sort of perpetual stuff. King f6, rook h7, king g6, and um, if white wants to keep the pawn, um, yeah, but but d8, yeah, maybe d8. Oh right, to win b7. Point. Oh, to force the no, and then then take b7. Yeah, this is certainly uh, something white could could uh, try to play for win. Mind you, rook d2 looks quite powerful to try and knock out this and this pawn. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not uh, not something easily won or something by white. And you see pawn. pawn. Yeah, yeah, black is, is decently active here, and uh, of course, black has an active king, and white has uh, king on b1. So, okay, but this is certainly not uh, not the best line. So, yeah. like the exchange on c4. Yeah, maybe there are some tries, but I think there wasn't something um, super great. So that White could have done. They mentioned nothing uh, like this in the mm. in the press conference. So oh, someone mentioned just repeating Rookie Eight to gain a bit of time on the clock to this position and think about it again, and then play D Seven. Uh, uh, but uh, that was the other idea, <laughs> just to repeat if that if the Rook was going to go back. Yeah. But he he played instead here Rook H One. Uh, just inviting both rooks to the seventh, and even though white's going to queen, there's going to be perpetual check because he's actually going to be threatening mate. It's not just a simple case of perpetual check. There's this threat of mate, isn't there? If the rook's here, it's threatening rook a1 mating. That's the big yeah. problem. Yeah, two rooks on the seventh. It's, uh, so, well. so here there's actually a mate threat, rook a1. Um, and Actually, this is the last ga game um, move I've got. I'm not sure if this is actually the last move. Sorry, I, f I think I might have. Was this actually the last move? Rook takes. Yeah, I think it, it. I think it was. It was. Uh, I think I, I saw the video. So um, Gerfan took on a2, and then it was uh, Anand's move, and he saw the, instead of moving, he just offered the draw, which is not uh, mm. exactly correct. <laughs> mm. But uh, okay, they sort of looked at each other and and ended the game. Mm. Um, if he tries this, I think black just, um, sorry, if he tries king d1, then uh, black, I don't think, plays uh, check here, because then rook c1, or sorry, king takes e2. No, black just plays check, I think, and, and drives yeah, the king want, back there. Yeah, you can just check here. And then rook, yes. rook back to threaten again mate. That, that's that's good enough, isn't it, to draw? Just to check there. Yeah, yeah that's, this is a draw. I think... Uh, I just thought of something. Uh, it would be funny to to saw a statistic on games where where one one side got two rooks on the seventh rank. I think this must be a tremendous score. Have you ever seen someone losing who gets two rooks on the seventh rank? At least it's a draw, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's very powerful. So. <laughs> or a win, even with even with the opponent queens with check. As 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 we were checking out a game earlier, um, which we might need need to do in the future, this Nakamura game. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, what what kind of game have we witnessed? It uh, looks like a pretty yeah correct game. I don't I, I don't think that there's some uh, some huge swings or something. White seemed uh, a bit um, yeah better maybe with the pawn, but uh, he had this kind of yeah. Sluggish development and uh, yeah, maybe a pretty, a pretty decent uh, or pretty um, yeah deserved draw. Yeah, let's do a quick overview and summary then. So it was they've obviously seen uh, uh, the previous video we did with F3 mentions, <laughs> and and now so the F3 might become uh, more fashionable on move three <laughs> against the Greenfield. Um, so we have here a position which. White plays h4, not not just with attacking intentions, but the main idea seems to be just to activate the rook, and and maybe to facilitate moves like knight h3, um, because this knight c4 is a little pain in in White's side on the queen side, and yeah. um, so the rook's activated kind of uh, like this, 
Uh, capturing FG is the most logical here. That diagonal is not such a big weakness to exploit. White protects the D pawn logically. And some prophylaxis moves, which we often see in games of Colson, King shifting to the far edge before an attack or something. But here it seems the King wasn't left in peace. Uh, Black played quite energetically with this E4. Uh, so there's a lot of dynamism Black's trying to get. Um, but uh, Queen A5, even a uh, sort of positional pawn sacrifice for long term pressure here with Queen A5. Yeah, um, so if you look at this, it's still a bit remarkable that he did this one because Black could have also, instead of um, giving this pawn, he could have also taken on F3. It's it's not a move that's uh, looking too terrible, mm. but uh, yeah, just it's it's something you 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 yeah you consider instead of uh, sacrificing this pawn. Yeah, it's 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 it takes uh, takes some. Um, Courage to to go into an essentially a sort of end game with the pawn down mm. instead of uh, playing this. But uh, he he was obviously very confident that Black's activity uh, is enough, and he never looked really worried. Uh, yeah. To be honest, um, okay. The Queen F5, which um, um, sacrifices this uh, E4 pawn. Yeah. So um, yeah, his rooks his rooks are good here after Rook takes F6. The Rook coming aggressively to attack that D pawn. Yeah. So the bishops got exchanged off, and now this d6, and white was, um, white was skinning on. Uh, sorry, white was skiing on thin ice a little bit here, uh, with with black's uh, pieces. Um, uh, well, a5 aggressive intentions, as we saw, where in some variations it's useful to support the b4 knight when it comes to b4. So here, after rook c2. B3. The knight is making uh, a route to come to B4 to coordinate A2 attack, uh, but that was factored in by White. Uh, so knight D4 hitting both the rook and exposing an attack on the knight, ready to get rid of that pesky knight, which he does. But now again, Black's rooks remain active and um, and sufficient to uh, get a draw, even though White's got. That usually the D pawn's one of the best pass pawns you can get, but here the the, the activity of the black rooks uh, seems to secure the draw quite comfortably. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, that was an exciting draw, though much more exciting, don't you think, than the other two draws? Yeah, so, sure. It uh, was certainly um, a bit more ambitious from uh, from white side, no? also to play. This kind of line, it's uh, this f3, and uh, what followed is uh, not exactly a conservative uh, line. White was uh, playing ambitiously, mm. but I think um, looked like very, very good uh, defense by by Gelfand here, sacrificing this pawn and retaining uh, compensation uh, even in the end game. So, yeah, I, for, uh, I think for me this is the most exciting so far. This game, yeah, it's um, has some dynamism in it. How to and, and a long-term pawn sack for active pieces. I think it's quite exciting. Yeah, and uh, if you look at um, the, the the match now, I think um, there was one uh, pretty um, pretty good and uh, I think very um, very true um, statement in the press conference. There was one journalist was asking um, if the next four, four four games would decide the match, and this is actually a, a pretty decent point because. If you look at this now, um, Anand had two whites. Now, next game will be Gelfand White. Then one black game by Anand, Gelfand White. And then we're at this uh, at the middle of the match where the colors uh, are switched. So game six will be uh, Gelfand White and game, game seven will be Gelfand White also. Mm. I'm not sure if you were aware of that. They don't, they don't alternate all the way through. They switch it in the middle of the match so ah. because it is considered um, to be uh, a bit unfair if the the player playing white first in the first uh, game would would have an advantage so they switch it in the middle so the next four games will see three times girlfriend as white mm. and if he um, doesn't get any plus score out of this um it's difficult <laughs> 
So it's, it's it's hard to see him winning with black. Some so if he wins, then it will most most likely we be with white. So and if it's a level score, they go onto a faster time limit. Yeah, if it's uh, six six, uh, they they play uh, rapid chess, and I think uh, you never know. This kind of tie breaks are, are I think a different situation also from the from the nerves kind of. Uh, perspective than some usual rapid games but well then Vichy would be the clear favorite I guess yeah I think so because he used to you know he's the very fast intuitive he used to be the most fa fastest GM going <laughs> yeah it's also in, in, in classical time uh, controls um, I think Arnold only has got uh, plus one or some, something against Gelfand like lost five and uh, won six or something it's pretty uh, pretty close but in rapid, uh, it's a disaster for for Boris. It's like a, a nothing score. So um, yeah. he certainly doesn't want to. Okay, if if it's unavoidable, they they play rapid, of course. But um, he certainly would prefer to <laughs> score a lead somewhere and uh, sort of uh, keep it till the end. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks, Chris. I uh, hope everyone on YouTube enjoyed that. Um, we'll upload to both our respective channels. Um, okay. Thanks very much for watching. Um, okay. okay. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, everyone.